Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our statistics class. Um, today we're going to uh, proceed with uh, descriptive statistic number three. If you remember, our first was frequency distribution. Our second was central tendency. Number three we call measures of dispersion. Uh, the degree to which our data points, also called scores, are spread out from each other. So we're talking about measures of spread. Measures of spread. Now there are actually three measures of dispersion. There's three of them. The first one is actually the range. The first one is the range. Now our textbook uh, talks about the range, and you actually should be in chapter three, you know, you, you know, in terms of your assigned reading and stuff. Chapter three talks about the range. The range is kind of a funny measure of dispersion because uh, realistically, different textbooks actually define this different ways. In other words, one text will say, well, the range is the highest score plus the lowest score plus one. And then another book will say, well, the range is the highest score minus the lowest score minus one. And you end up with this number that you really don't know, I mean, you, the, you don't know what the number means. So we use the range, you and I actually use the range. You know, like, well, uh, in, in terms of height in this class, the tallest kid is six foot two and the shortest kid is five foot one. And we pretty much know what we mean. Oh, the range of test scores went from 95 to 49. And we pretty much know what we're, what, what we're talking about. So we're not even going to study the range because it's kind of a no-brainer. What we will study, though, in great depth are these other two measures of dispersion, variance and standard deviation. Variance and standard deviation. These two measures will actually be working with the rest of the semester. That's, that's how important they are. These two measures measure the degree to which our data points, also called scores, um, are dispersed, are dispersed around the mean, are dispersed around the mean. The degree to which our data points are dispersed around the mean. We're going to look at a, a lot of examples of this, but before we do that, we need to do a little review of our symbols. Remember those statistical symbols? And remember I said you need to know them ASAP? We're going to have a little pop quiz here. Okay, uh, variance. Uh, the symbol for popul... Don't go back in your notes. The symbol for population variance is... Sigma squared. Sigma squared. This gentleman has been studying. Or he has the right page open. Uh, the... Uh, Sample symbol for variance. Sample variance is what? Very good, very good. Population standard deviation is symbolized using what? Wow, great. Uh, sample standard deviation is symbolized using the? Yes, okay. This should be tip of the tongue kind of stuff now. Now look. The variance is the standard deviation squared. Do you see that? The variance is the standard deviation squared. The standard deviation, therefore, is the square root of the variance. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. These two measures of dispersion are extremely important. Let's see, you know, what this all means. Let's suppose we have a data set. We're going to call this data set X. This is a variable. This is what kind of a variable class? 
it's a dependent variable. Any data set that we analyze is a dependent variable. It's the dependent variable is the data. Okay. Um, in this case, let's suppose we have eight numbers, and the numbers look like this. Uh, these numbers, let's suppose these, these numbers represent some ratio scaled data like inches or feet or whatever. What's one of the characteristics of the ratio scale in terms of zero? We have a, we have a what? A true zero point, yes. You should be studying. Okay, this, I'm going to ask questions on all this stuff, you guys. I be, absolute zero. <laughs> be, you know, be, be prepared. Okay, um, just some quick um, measures of dispersion. Uh, we notice a mode of six, right? Uh, median, remember we have uh, eight scores. Median is right here, 6.5. If we summed x and divide by n, uh, we get a mean of seven. x bar is seven. Let's determine the degree to which our data points are dispersed around the mean. Let's see what this, this is really all about. In fact, let's create a column. We're going to call this the mean. And let's insert this mean data point in every little slot here. The mean is 7, right? And we're going to determine the degree to which our data points are dispersed around the mean. This is how they develop this stuff. Okay, they created another column, and this is also in chapter three. This is no, should be no surprise, where they subtracted each mean data point from its respective raw score data point. And by the way, the term raw score is just the score. Like your heights in that data set, those were raw scores. Your exam scores are raw scores. Any data set are raw scores. In this case, they call this column the deviation score. Three minus seven, minus four, four minus seven, minus three, minus one, minus one, zero, two, three, four. The degree to which our data points are dispersed around the mean. Well, you know what, this tells us something. This tells us something in a kind of a rough way, so to speak. And again, when they were developing this, they summed the deviation scores, and they got zero. And they actually came up with a mathematical rule. The sum of the deviation scores always equals zero. The sum of the deviation scores always equals zero. So if we had a really large, if we had like eight million numbers, and these numbers were like really, really, really big, and we computed a mean, the mean would be really big. And if we subtracted that mean from each respective uh, data point to get this deviation score column, and then sum the deviation score, it would always equal zero. That's that's it, that's the way it happens. So this, it, pardon me? But well, what if it's not zero? Oh, it always is zero. This is called the sum of the deviation scores. They discovered this. So, and they, they, kept, they kept getting this every time. So they did with any, you know, what any mathematician does when they get a little flustered. They, you know, they threw up their arms and they say, well, let's just square it. You know, let's like when in doubt, square it. Okay, and that's what they did. They created another column that they called the squared deviations. So let's square each of these numbers. Negative 4 squared, 16. Uh, negative, three, uh, negative 3 squared, um, 9. Uh, 1, 1, 0. 2 squared, 4. 3 squared, 9. 4 squared, 16. Now, when we sum these squared deviations, we get a number. In this case, 56. 
This particular piece is called the sum of the squared deviations. Now again, I'm writing all this down for a reason. Certainly not for my health. Certainly not, it's not going to help my cold. I'm doing this for a reason. This, this piece is called the sum of the squared deviations. Also called the sum of squares. The sum of squares. Or SS. Remember I said this stuff's a language? The computations are really simple. This is a language. Now, this variance, we're going to call it S squared. We'll just use the sample statistic. Is actually the sum of the squared deviations around the mean divided by the number of scores. Now you could use n in this denominator or n minus 1. Our book uses n minus 1. I'm just going to use n right now. n minus 1 just creates a slightly smaller denominator, a slightly larger solution, whatever. We're going to use just n right now. Um, so let's just plug in. Our variance is the sum of squares or the sum of the squared deviations around the mean, which in this case is 56, divided by our n of 8, our variance in this case equals 7. Our variance equals 7. The standard deviation, s, is the square root of the variance. So in this case, s is the square root of 7, Square root of 7, if you were to do that on your calculators, 2.65. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Now, at this point, we don't really know what these numbers mean. Uh, we will on Tuesday when we get into z and the standard normal distribution. I, I'll give you a little hint, just if you want to write this down. Um, this s equals one z unit. This s is actually equal to one z unit. We'll, we'll learn more about that um, next week. But for now, variance and standard deviation. Let's try this again, you know, with a little simpler data set. Let's just say we have these three numbers, you know, n equals three. You know, this was the little data set we used when we did the summation. <coughs> excuse me, the summation exercise. Uh, sum x equals 6 divided by 3 gives us a, a mean of 2. We're going to determine the degree to which our data points are dispersed around the mean. We're going to replicate what we did over here. So again, we'll create a mean column. And we'll insert this 2 in each one of these little slots. We're going to determine the degree to which our data points are dispersed around the mean by subtracting each mean data point from its respective raw score to create what we call the deviation score. So let's do that. 1 minus 2 minus 1, 2 minus 2, 0, 3 minus 2, 1. Now, when we sum the deviation scores, we always get what? Zero. The sum of the deviation scores always equals? Zero. Very good. So what do we got to do? We got to square the deviation scores to create what we call the squared deviations. So let's do that. Negative 1 squared 1, 0 squared 0, 1 squared 1. Now, when we sum these squared deviations, we get a number, in this case 2. Let's just fill in the blanks here like we did over here. This piece we call the sum of the deviation scores.
which in, as we know always equals zero, right? This little piece is called the sum, and again I'm writing this down for a reason. Why do you suppose that is? Best question. Absolutely. The sum of the squared deviation, also called the sum of squares, or SS for short. Now we're going to see SS a lot toward the tail end of our, our inferential stat portion. So let's just finish this. Our variance, S squared, is our sum of squares, our sum of the squared deviations, which in this case is 2. It's doing some running, I'm standing there. Our variance in this case is 0.66. Variance is 0.66. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. The square root of 0.66, if you were to do it on your calculators, is 0.81. So again, we have variance and standard deviation es estimates. We don't really know what these numbers mean right now, which is fine. We will on Tuesday. Again, I said, just to give you a little hint, S equals one Z unit. So one Z unit equals, in this case, 0.81. We'll learn more about that next week. The takeaway, though, right now, is this. We see much smaller variance and standard deviation est estimates in this particular data set. Why? Well, because we have not a whole lot of dispersion. Our range is only from 1 to 3. We have a pretty tightly compressed um, uh, set of bivariate data points. In fact, this particular, this particular uh, set of data points we could describe as homogeneous. So when we say homogeneous, we mean very little, you know, a lot of similarity between, you know, um, you know, very little dispersion. This particular data set, we see a bit larger variance in standard deviation estimates. We might describe this, you know, the range is from 3 to 11. We might describe this as heterogeneous. So in this case we have, um, you know, uh, in this case where we have very little dispersion, here we have, you know, more dispersion. And again, you know, these are relative terms. So any data set with, you know, not a whole lot of dispersion, you could think as homogeneous any data set, relatively speaking, right, with more dispersion, you could think of as being heterogeneous, so to speak. Homogeneity and heterogeneity. You know, homogeneity, similarity, heterogeneity, more of a difference. So here we see more of a difference. Why? Well, because we have more dispersion, as indicated by these variance and standard deviation estimates. Here we have less dispersion. Okay. Now, great, you're probably sitting there going, gosh, I love this. This is my favorite class. Hmm. Uh, again, that was, a, that was a little bit of humor thrown in here. Uh, what we just did here in terms of this whole blah, blah, blah procedure, you know, this whole procedure here, what we just did here is called a defin the definitional approach. The definitional approach or the definitional formula. The definitional formula. This is a definitional approach. Why? Why? Well, because it, it, it pretty much defines it defines what we're doing. It, you know, it, 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 it breaks these whole 
some of the square deviations over n down into little steps where variance ultimately is the ratio of this to this, sum of squares divided by n. Okay, and we did it again over here. Now, that's actually the bad news. And we're not going to compute like this anymore. We're not going to compute like this, like we have been for the last 15 minutes. We're not going to actually compute variance and standard deviation uh, like this anymore. Why? Because as data sets get bigger and bigger and as the numbers get larger, this method can become very cumbersome. It's very, very time consuming. So we have a, a much more efficient way of computing variance and standard deviation. It's called the computational formula. It's called the computational formula. And this computational formula looks like this. Now we don't really see any surprises here. We see summations. And so we know how to do summations. Let's see how this all works with our data sets. You will see that this is a much more efficient, less time-consuming method of computing. Let's start out with this uh, data set number one. Our job is to compute S squared and S, just like we did before. Let's start over here. All we have to do, class, is square each x data point. Just let's just square each x data point. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 36, 36, 49, 81, 100, 121. We bring everything down to sum. Sum x is 56. Somebody uh, help me with these sums, please. We'll do a sum x squared. And get your calculator out and help me. And a sum x quantity squared. Uh, let's start off. 56 squared is what? And then somebody add these numbers up. 56 squared, 3,136. 3,136. And then if somebody would add these numbers up, please, do it very methodically. That's not right. 440. 440. Is that correct? Does anybody else do this? I can't get that last number. That last number. 121. Right. The one about it. 100. 100. 448. 448. Okay. We'll go with it. Now we can very easily compute variance. Variance, according to the computational formula, is sum x squared, 448 minus the sum x uh, quantity squared, 3136, over our n of 8, 
all over our n of 8. So again, it becomes this whole quantity subtracted from this and then divided by this. So somebody divide this by this, please. 392. Minus 392 over 8. And then this minus this is what? 56. Is 56 over 8. Our variance is 7. Just like we had before. Now it's obvious that this is a much simpler method. We only have two columns. Simple summations, bop, bop, bop. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Square root of 7, 2.65. The computational method, a much more efficient way of, of, of computing these. Let's try this again using the simpler data set. Uh, we'll square each data point. 1 squared uh, 1, 2 squared 4, 3 squared 9. We'll bring everything down to sum. Sum x is 6. Sum x squared. The sum of this column is 14. The sum x quantity squared, 6 squared is 36. We're ready to go. Variance is, and this should really look like this, variance is this sum of squares, uh, sum x squared, 14, minus the sum x quantity squared, 36, divided by our n of um, 3, all divided by our n of 3. Let's bring this down. 14 minus 36 divided by 3 is 12 over 3. The variance is 2 over 3. Variance is 0.66. Just like we had before. <coughs> the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Square root of 0 0.66, 0 0.81. Same thing, same answers as we had before. Much more efficient way of computing. Much more efficient way of computing. The computational formula. And again, this is nothing more, right, than the sum of squares divided by n or n minus 1. Our book uses n minus 1, I use n. You could use both. In fact, you have some homework problems for chapter 3. When you're doing the variance and standard deviation computations for your homework, use n minus 1 and you'll get the right answer. When you're doing computations for me in this class or on the exams, use n. Okay. So when you're doing your homework this weekend, you're just doing some of these computations. Use n minus 1. You'll get the right answer. In this class, though, we'll use n. Let's suppose we have a data set with um, seven numbers. That looks like this. We see a range from 5 to 42. Class, do you think our variance and standard deviation will be bigger than the ones we've had before or less than the ones we've had before? More. Probably more. Why? Because we have more dispersion. In this case, our range goes from 5 to 42. Let's compute s squared and s.
and do this right along with me. Just, you know, and I'm going to sort of expedite things a little bit. We square each x data point. 16 squared, 256. 26 squared, 676. 34 squared, 1156. 42 squared, 1764. We have an n of 7, 7 numbers. We bring everything down to sum. Sum x is 144. 144 squared is 20736. 20736. Sum x squared, or the sum of the squared x's, in this case, is 4098. Now I have to just kind of stop right here and remind you guys, don't get in trouble. Students get cocky. They think, yeah, this is, this, is really, this is really easy, which it is. But they think it's so easy that they don't even have to practice. So they confuse this with this. And when they plug in, they plug in the wrong numbers, end up with the wrong answer. OK. Set this up correctly. So we'll say s squared, the variance, in this case the sample variance, we're dealing with in sample statistics is the sum of the squared x's, 4098, minus the sum x quantity squared, 20736, divided by our n of 7, all divided by our n of 7. So in terms of order of operations, again, it's, you know, this whole quantity subtracted from this, and then ultimately divided by 7. So let's do that. The variance, s squared, 4098 minus whatever this ratio is, it's 2962.3. over our n of 7. And so we just bring it down. The variance 4098, excuse me, Whoa. hello. Uh, this difference is 1135.7 over 7. S squared, in this case, is rather large rather heterogeneous, so to speak. Uh, this ratio actually equals 162.24. The variance is 162.24. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation is the square root of this number. S ends up being uh, 12.74. Variance and standard deviation. Now at this point, again, the takeaway is, you know, just this. Um, you know, we have more dispersion in this particular data set than we did in the first two. Than we did in the first two. Again, here we see not a whole lot of dispersion. Uh, therefore, our Variance and standard deviation estimates are not real large numbers. So, yes, sir? I have a quick question. Um, I was doing math along with you, and one of them, one of them that we rounded up was uh, like point, point 0.29 and then 5. We rounded the. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, and then the 9 to 3. Yeah, don't, don't worry about all that rounding. I mean. Because you told us on the test, we could, as long as we're close, it doesn't Exactly. Really okay. So, were your, were your answers close? Yeah. yeah, okay, and, that, and that, that's good enough, you know. Okay, so we see here again, lots of dispersion. Over here, not a whole lot of dispersion. Okay, let's work with this. 
let's suppose, um, in fact, let's take a step back a little bit. Um, in fact, let's, uh, let's suppose we have a data set that looks like this. And we're presented, the data set's actually presented to us this way. Let's suppose these are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for 14 cities in the Midwest right now. Freezing. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, it's pretty cold up there. Uh, right off the top of your head, guys, in terms of central tendency, can you tell me what the median is? You know what? You know, what do we got to do? What do we have to do? We we got to put them in order. Yeah. You know, I could have I could have you guys put this. You know, put these in order. Uh, you know, because I'm such a great guy, I'll do it for you. It's just a, okay. Let me put them in order. Put them in order. put them in order, it makes things a little bit easier. Now, class, tell me what the mode is. What is the mode? Yeah. We have a couple modes, don't we? We have two modes, two and four. So what is this distribution called? It's called a what? It's bimodal. It's a bimodal distribution. OK. We have 14 scores. That's an even number. Um, median's actually 5. The median has a couple other names, doesn't it? What's it called? The median is also called the what? It's the 50th percentile, right? And it's also called what? Q2. 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 Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we've done some easy um, central tendency uh, calculations. And actually, I can tell you, if we were to do a sum x, which uh, in this case is 86, 86 divided by our n of 14 gives us a mean of 6.14. So we have a bimodal distribution. The mean is slightly larger than the median. What kind of skew might this signal? I know we have a couple of bumps because we're bimodal. But the mean is slightly larger than the median. What type of skew might this be? A what type of skew? A positive skew, a right skew. Remember the characteristics of skews. Remember the configuration of skews. In the positive skew, the mean is a larger number than the median. And the median is a larger number than the mode. So this isn't a perfect positive skew, but it's it's a type of positive skew. 
Okay, let's, um, just for the heck of it, just, for, just to get a little exercise, a little statistics exercise, um, let's revisit that uh, definitional approach, just for the heck of it. You know, where we're using this definitional formula, you know, sum of squares divided by the number of scores. Um, in fact, let's um, list the numbers again, create the mean, the deviation score, and the squared deviations. Okay, we'll list the numbers. And again, what are we doing here when we're, you know, computing variance and standard deviation? We're, we're determining the degree to which our data points are dispersed around the mean. We have a mean of 6.14. Let's put that in their proper, in its proper place. Oh man. See what I'm talking about? This method can be really, really cumbersome. Now, we create what we call our deviation score by subtracting each mean data point, right, from its respective raw score data point. Well, let's do this. 3 minus 6.14, negative 3.14. 1 minus 6.14, negative 5.14. 2 minus 1.64, negative 4.14. Negative 2.14, negative 0.14. 6.86, this minus this, 6.86. This minus this, um, 1.86. Uh, 1 um, 4.86, 8.86, negative 4.14, negative 6.14, negative 2.14, uh, this minus this, 0.86, this minus this, 3.86. Ah. Now we got to sum all these. Well, the sum of the, of the deviation scores always equals what? Yeah. You're right. So the sum of the deviation scores always equals zero. So what do we got to do? We have to square the deviation scores. Oh, great. Don't you just love this? I'm glad this is the last time we're doing this. Negative 3.14 squared, 9.86. Statistics, lots of numbers. Negative 5.14, 26.42. Negative 4.14 squared, 17.14. Uh, negative 2.14 squared, 4.58. 0 0.02, 47.06, 3.46, 23.62, 78.5. 17.14, 37 37.7, 4.58, 0.74, 14.9. Uh, okay, if we sum these squared deviations, if we sum these squared deviations, we get a number, 285.72. Great. Our variance then 
using this definitional approach is our sum of squares, the sum of the squared deviations around the mean, which in this case is 285.7, divided by the number of scores, which is what? 14. If we do this simple computation, uh, we get a variance of 20.41. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance, the square root of 20.41, 4.52. Now again, we see that this method can be cumbersome. Uh, it just, you know, what, what if we had, it just, it just, you know, so we have this computational method. Let's try this again. In fact, let's, use, let's do the computational method. We'll just create x, and let me list the numbers again. Again, we have 14 numbers. Let's compute variance and standard deviation the computational way. We'll simply square each x data point. 3 squared 9, 1 squared 1, 4, 16, 36, 13 squared, 169, 64, 121, 225, 4, 0, 16, 49, and 100. Simply square each x data point, bring everything down to sum. In this case, sum x is 86. Our sum x, the quantity squared, 86 squared, 73.96. The sum of the squared x's, in other words, the sum of this column, in this case is 814. Easy peasy. Easy with like five e's next to it. So we can um, compute variance using the computational formula. It just makes things a lot simpler. Sum x squared. and Take a peek at what we just did over here. You're going to see numbers coming out the same. Uh, sum x squared, 814, minus the sum x quantity squared over our n of uh, 14, all over the n of 14. We bring it down. Variance, 814 minus this whole ratio. Right? 7396 divided by 14 is 528.29 over 14. It looks like 285.71 over 14. S squared is 20.41. Same thing we got over there. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation, you know, is the square root of 20.41. S is 4.52. Variance and standard deviation using the definitional approach and the computational approach. Okay, there is some homework. When you do this homework, again, I want you to do, do it for practice. And when you're doing it, use n minus 1 in this denominator. Just n minus 1 in this denominator, you'll get the right answer. When we're doing our work in class and for our exams, we'll be using n. Okay. 
That concludes today's lecture on measures of dispersion. Uh, next week we'll start in with uh, descriptive stat number four, measures of position. Thank you very much.